Hello, my friend. I have a special invitation for you. I have a new, potent, concentrated group coaching program called Crucible. We begin on April 10th. You can go check out timewitchery.com slash crucible. And I'm going to tell you all about it at the end of the show. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Welcome to Mind Witchery. I'm your host, Natalie Miller, and I'm so glad you're here. Hello, darling. I'm hoping that you are joining me in smiling a little bit at the extra-ness of the title for today's episode, which is a spell for vanquishing martyrdom. And this title is extra. This title, this title is a little extra dramatic because the phenomenon that I want to talk about today, I think, is a little extra dramatic. So I should probably begin by clarifying that when I'm talking about martyrdom, I'm more talking about the modern kind of psychosocial phenomenon rather than rather than, you know, the age old uh, phenomenon of, you know, religious and social persecution. So what I mean by martyrdom in this episode is not like the death or suffering of someone in the name of a cause or a religion. That's something different, and that's the original meaning of martyrdom. What I'm talking about is that is that social phenomenon that you know so well. You know it because you have experienced it in yourself, in particular relationships. And the interwebs actually gave me a great definition of this, so let me share it with you. The martyrdom I'm talking about is a display of feigned or exaggerated suffering to obtain sympathy or admiration. I would not be surprised if a particular person in your life comes to mind when you think about this phenomenon. A particular person who talks about how life is happening to them, about how other people's choices are dictating what they can and can't do. And this is also something that I bet (laughs) you can recognize even in your own self. I caught myself in a moment of martyrdom just last night. I was chatting with a friend and we were talking about how if it were up to us, how we would love to travel the world and live and work from all kinds of different places. We talked about how Oh, we'd love to go to Europe for as long as a visa would permit and work from there. We'd love to go to Central America and live on the beach and perfect our Spanish. We'd love to live all over the country. We'd love to live in all of the beautiful cities that we we only ever get to visit. This friend and I are both coaches. We're both coaches and we we can really work from anywhere. And we were talking about what a shame it is that here we have this inherent freedom in our work and yet we are confined to suburbs on the East Coast. And when we talked about why, why we found ourselves confined to suburban East Coast living. (laughs) Of course, it's because of other people 
and other people's preferences. So, oh, it's our partners. It's our it's our ex partners. We've got family to care for. We've got commitments that we've made. And happily, in the middle of this pity party <laughs> that she and I were throwing, I paused and thought, ah, oh, this is exactly what I am sharing a spell for tomorrow. This exact phenomenon, this martyrdom, this, oh, woe, woe are us. Woe is the coach who can't live anywhere she wants, even though her, her work would permit it, right? So the spell for vanquishing martyrdom is simply remembering that we are free to choose. It is exchanging our have-tos for choose-tos. So why do I live on the suburban East Coast? Because I choose to live close to my kid's dad. Because I choose the relative stability of one home. Because I choose a partnership with someone who also is committed to being here on the East Coast because of his family. Why can't I travel the world? I can. I can, but I choose not to. So this remembering and reclaiming of the power to choose is so important. It's important not only because it helps us to be a little more honest about our situations. Life is not happening to me. I am also happening to life. I'm making choices every day. I don't have to wake up early in the morning. I choose to. I don't have to record this podcast. I choose to. I don't have to pay my bills. Now, I don't get to choose the consequences of not paying my bills. Right? I don't I don't get to not pay my bills and face no consequences, but I do have the choice to stop paying my bills. When I shift from have to thinking toward choose to thinking, I get to remember what is important to me. I get to reclaim all of the agency available to me. I get to think about my values, my priorities. When I shift out of have to thinking and into choose to thinking, I get to live on purpose. Now, of course, and I talk about this all the time, I am co-creating this life. I'm co-creating it with all kinds of different forces. I'm co-creating it with my family members. I'm co-creating it with Various kinds of circumstances, right? I'm co-creating it with the Delta variant at this moment. I'm co-creating it with heat waves. I'm co-creating it with things that are happening in this world. And yet, I still have a say. I do get to decide 
who I want to be and how I want to be as I am navigating these co-creations. So there are a couple of reasons why I think this, this spell is important and helpful. And as a reminder, the spell is, I don't have to, I choose to. I don't have to live in the Maryland suburbs. I choose to. I don't have to pay my bills. I choose to. I don't have to keep the house clean. I choose to. Whatever the obligation or the circumstance that you're bemoaning, the spell for vanquishing martyrdom asks you to remember you don't have to, you choose to. And again, it's important for a couple of reasons. So one, I really want you to take a moment to feel the difference in your body. So. I'd like you to think to yourself, I have to open my mouth. I have to open my mouth. You can go ahead and open it if you want, believing I have to open my mouth. And notice what happens. Take a moment. Notice what happens. Notice how your jaw feels. Notice how your breath moves or doesn't. Notice the vibe you are conjuring in your body as you are believing, I have to open my mouth. Okay, so now give yourself a break. (laughs) Give yourself a little break. Maybe have a sip of something or enjoy closing your mouth for a moment. Okay, and then let's do a little compare and contrast here. So now I'd like you to believe, I choose to open my mouth. I choose to open my mouth. I choose to open my mouth. And now notice the vibe you are conjuring in your body. Notice how your face feels. Notice how your breath moves. I'm hoping you'll try this just one more time because to me, it's so helpful. It's so important to notice the effect of have to thinking. When I'm believing I have to, there's so much tension there's stress. I imagine if we had a little blood pressure or heart rate monitor on when we were showing the difference between have to and choose to thinking, I imagine we would see bodily stress in those numbers. It feels that way. And listen, Life on planet Earth, it is already plenty challenging. (laughs) There are already so many challenges that our bodies encounter. I don't want to add to the stress, to the visceral stress I encounter as I'm making my way through life on this planet. So I'm hoping you will join me in just one more kind of a quicker compare and contrast because I want to help you understand intellectually, but also also in your body, the effect of have to thinking. So try this one more quickly this time. I have to be still. I have to be still versus I choose to be still. I choose to be still. 
So I'm hoping that you can feel what I and many, 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 most all of my clients feel a real embodied difference between have to and choose to. Okay, so that's the first, that's the first reason why. Why do I want us to use this spell? Because I want us to feel more peace, more spaciousness, more calm in our bodies. And there's another reason too. And this reason is feminist, and this reason is evolutionary. We do have choices in this life. We do get to choose how to be. When we are in have to thinking, just like the blood vessels constrict, just as the the throat, the airway constricts, so too does our creativity. We shut down and we accept the status quo. And as we know, the status quo is white dominant. The status quo is patriarchal. The status quo is ableist and heteronormative. The status quo is oppressive in so many ways. And when we completely refuse the powers of choice that we do have moment by moment, that status quo stands there unchallenged. The status quo, the social norms are always there to tell us what we have to do. And when we agree, when we take those norms and exhortations on as a burden, as have-tos, then we take our bit of co-creative power and we lend it to that cause. But when we choose to, when we reclaim our agency, our power of choice, just like the blood vessels open, just like the airways open, so too does our creativity. All of a sudden now, rather than believing we have to, we are remembering we choose to. And so we get to remember also what's important to us. We get to remember our values. And because we are thinking in those terms, we're thinking in qualitative terms, now all of a sudden, there are more options available, or there's at least the potential for more options. Because when I am in my co-creativity fully, I can be creative. So let me give you an example of that. There are a few people in my life right now who are entrepreneurs considering positions within bigger companies. So they're considering full-time jobs. And I'm here, of course, sometimes as a friend and sometimes as a coach, reminding them of their agency and their co-creative power. Because they are approaching the idea of a full-time job from the place of choose to rather than have to, they are helping to define what exactly a full-time job is. So, for example, one person does not want to work 40 hours a week. And she began with, oh, if I take this position, I have to work 40 hours a week. 
Well, no, you, you choose to. You choose to work 40 hours a week. And by the way, does it, does it have to be 40 hours a week? Or could you make a different choice? Could you choose to ask for a full-time position that's more like 32 hours a week? I read not long ago of a lawyer who had decided that in her practice, full-time would be 32 hours a week. Four days a week is their work week. And it's funny, she said she gets tons and tons and tons of job applications, right? Everyone is like, oh, she's used her agency, her co-creativity to make something that appeals to me. And she's like, listen, I I can't hire every single lawyer. You've got to go make that for yourself. Go demand that for yourself. You go start a firm where full-time is 32 hours a week. And I love that. I love that that's the way she put it. So, again, when we are thinking in have-to terms, when we are thinking, well, I don't have a say, effectively, we are shutting down our say. We are shutting down, along with our say, our creativity, our agency. And while we're doing it, we're feeling terrible, as I bet you felt in that embodied difference between have to and choose to. So the spell for vanquishing martyrdom, it's a personal spell. It's the personal shift from have to to choose to. And it's a shift that has enormous co-creative potential collectively. It's funny, I suddenly thought of Stacey Abrams just now. Stacey Abrams, whose bid for governor of Georgia was just so fucked by a corrupt status quo. And she talks actually about how she had to take some time to just feel and reckon with the loss and the fuckery of that loss. But Stacey Abrams is not about to languish in martyrdom. Stacey Abrams is here completely to claim every bit of co-creative power she has. And and I'll actually say, not just claim her co-creative power and agency, but to amplify it by using it to empower other people too. So what did she do? She tripled down, quadrupled down on an age-old project of hers, voter rights, and community-based get-out-the-vote efforts in Georgia. And it made an enormous difference. So this is not at all to say that what happened to Stacey Abrams in the election of 2018 in that governor's race was fair or okay. No, it wasn't. It was totally fucked up. But she didn't use that loss as a reason to have to relinquish her power. She stepped up all the way into her power. And as such, she co created a movement that is helping us reclaim democracy. So, friends, that's what I'm talking about. 
It's not that life is fair. It's not. But it's that, nonetheless, we all have the power to choose. There are very, very, very few things we have to do. And interestingly, when we find ourselves, this is my experience anyway, when I find myself in a, in a situation where I have to, there's very little drama around it, actually. It's like, okay, I have the diagnosis. I have to have the procedure. I have the tax bill. I have to pay it. There's not a lot of drama around it. It's when I am, I'm rich and drunk in agency that martyrdom, obligation, woe is me, sneaks in. Why is that? Mm. Living on purpose is very energy intensive. Chipping away at the status quo takes courage and work creating a more beautiful purposeful life creating a more beautiful more freely co-creative world that's hard but i'm here for it and I think if you are listening, you are here for it, too. Okay, my love, the spell for vanquishing martyrdom. I don't have to. I choose to. And even collectively, we don't have to. We choose to. And when we step into that choice, we get to reconnect with our values. We get to reconnect with our creativity. We get to empower and energize our co-creativity. And that changes everything. Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Mind Witchery. To catch all the magic I'm offering, please subscribe to the show. Or if you want a little bit of weekly witchiness in your inbox, sign up for my Sunday letter at mindwitchery.com. If today's episode made you think of a friend or loved one, your sister, your neighbor, please tell them about it. We need more magic makers in this troubled world. Like all good things, this podcast is co-created by stellar people. Our music is by fabulous DJ, artist, and producer, Shammy D. Our gorgeous art is by the sorcerers at New Moon Creative. Mind Witchery is produced in conjunction with Particulate Media, K.O. Myers, executive producer. And I am Natalie Miller. Till next time. Hello. As promised, here is a little bit of info about my new group coaching program called Crucible. You know what a crucible is. A crucible is a container in which transformation occurs. It's a strong container, basically like where you melt down metals so that you can make new things. You can make alloys. And my program is called Crucible because it is designed to give you a space where you can summon the courage, the inspiration, the momentum that you need to finally take action on, to finally manifest that thing that you have been wanting to do. And what is that thing? I don't know. That thing might be a new offer 
if you are an entrepreneur. That thing might be the idea for the book that's been swirling around in your head. It might be an outline for that book. It might be a whole short story. That thing might be a job description for the assistant that you've been wanting to hire. That thing might be your own podcast. Whatever that thing is that you keep thinking, oh, someday I'd really love to make this happen. Crucible says, let's do it now and let's do it together. So Crucible offers seven weeks of group coaching. Crucible offers insight into how it is exactly that I take an idea and make it real. Right Now, this is not about me kind of imposing my method onto you, but it is about sparking your own creativity and insisting on a self-honoring way of creating. Yeah. Crucible is about community with other people who are also making it happen. And I cannot even begin to put into words how valuable that is, how much of a difference it makes to be surrounded by other people who are expanding and growing into what's next. Crucible is in large measure about helping you to claim the time and energy that you need to create what's next. And so we'll use my anti-planner, Time Witchery, to do that. We will use co-working sessions that are hosted by Flow Club. I'm very excited about that part in particular. So Crucible is not assuming that you have the willpower and courage and time and energy to make this thing happen. In fact, Crucible says, oh yeah, let's give you a place to generate that, to generate all that you need in order to manifest what it is that you want next. So you are invited. You can go check out Crucible at timewitchery.com slash crucible. We begin on April 10th. We go through April and most of May, and then we get to take off for the summer having finally taken action on that thing, that thing that you've been toying with, flirting with, wondering about, dreaming about for so long. So again, more details at timewitchery.com slash crucible. I super, super hope you will meet me inside.